as we discussed yesterday in today's session we will discuss about sap activate methodology okay so now what exactly is sap activate so in sap ecc whenever we were working on any let's say implementation or maybe uh, upgradation or global uh, rollout projects we were following the methodology that is asap methodology a sap methodology right so what exactly is uh, this methodology and why it is required the methodology is a set of guided principles okay in which you have a uh, different phases okay so for example let's say you want to implement sap as a customer now the methodology is very important because what will happen is different consultants will apply their own mind in implementing the product okay so let's say for example you have a consulting team of 10 consultants and if there is no proper framework where to start what to do next there is lot of chances of confusion okay so what exactly needs to be done where exactly we should start what should be our second phase what should be our third phase so you will not get that much clarity if you don't have a particular methodology in place and that is exactly where sap came up and they delivered the methodologies in sap ecc itself or maybe even in sap r2 and r3 also there are lot of methodologies but the latest one that that we know that we all of us worked on was sap asset methodology now what was there in sap sap asset methodology it was a again it was the principles which which has different phases okay so normally whenever we are thinking about sap asset methodology can you just tell me which are the five or what are the number of phases you remember in sap asset methodology anyone which are the different phases project preparation blueprint preparation and uh, realization final preparation uh, go level cut or go level submit all right so at the high level this were the five different phases within sap asset methodology so it was starting with uh, the initial preparation which is also called as project preparation so within project preparation what we do before we jump start the project before we go into Uh, the detailed discussions with the customer. There are a lot of things which are need to be prepared from the project point of view, project uh, management point of view. So, for example, which consultant will go to the project? Okay, who will be the project manager? What would be the resources required? What would be the timeline of the project? What would be the scope of the project? So, all these things are nothing but part of project preparation. Okay, and then once your project preparation is ready. you go for the business blueprinting phase what do you do in the business blueprinting phase in bbb phase we try to understand the requirements of the customer where we are implementing sap okay and based on those requirements we recommend customers like how many company codes should be created uh, what should be the enterprise structure okay which fiscal year brand they should use which chart of account they can use okay so those things are finalized during the business blueprinting phase so in short the business blueprinting phase gives us the uh, complete picture like what exactly we need to set up in the system okay so what exactly we need to configure uh, which are the uh, different z uh, reports that we need to create so most of the things we highlight in the business blueprint document now once the business blueprint document is created the next step is to actually perform those uh, configurations okay so for example in the business blueprint document you written that we will be creating uh, this many number of company codes this company code would be assigned to this fiscal year or i uh, will be the common chart of account or maybe separate chart of accounts there will be this much number of controlling areas there will be this much number of customer vendor account groups whether the customer will be using automatic payment program so those configurations okay so in short whatever you have written in the business blueprint document that customer is going to implement this 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 you are actually going to configure those things in the system along with your custom codes okay so 
in the business blueprint if you have written something that this particular functionality customer is looking for but this is not available in the standard sap system so we will go with the custom code so even that creation of custom code also needs to be done during the realization phase okay and realization phase ends when you completed all your configuration everything whatever was written in the a business blueprint document has been configured in the system and then starts the final preparation phase in the final preparation phase what you do is you ask your customer to verify you ask your customers to perform uh, the testing uat and all where he will or he or she will see the system they will try to do the transactions and they will find out if everything is working correctly or there are some uh, kind of gaps which means what what the customer was expecting is always what you have configured okay again it will be uh, to and fro because uh, many of the things will, uh, will come back to you as a consultant that customer is not expecting this we need to change this configuration so after all this uh, repetitions you will finalize the uh, uat and then customer is ready to finalize the date on which they will go for go live okay and when they do the go live you again need to migrate the data from the old legacy system and perform the data migration steps and all those things and finally you will go live and then you start giving the normal support okay so these are the normal five phases that we had in sap asset methodology Okay, so I think all of you were aware of this uh, phases, but now can you tell me whether in your experience, whatever number of projects you worked on, how many customers are actually following SAP asset methodology? See, I'm not saying they are saying they are following SAP methodology. I'm saying practically they are following SAP asset methodology. Or you think there are some deviations, or maybe there are some problems. in sap asset methodology due to which customers are deviating from it and they are uh, not following sap activate methodology can you just share your experience anyone just just share your experience nothing is right or wrong here it is just like i just want to know uh, how much uh, you understand sap asset methodology and what are your suggestions that Uh, this is something which is not good in asset methodology and that is the reason customers always look for uh, the different options uh, but gaurav nowadays we don't see those many implementations right direct implementations so whatever we involve it is like uh, mid of uh, any uh, developments or like that so in my case uh, i have been involved in development projects only or testing projects okay so we have a task to work on the implementation project right uh, your voice is breaking is it okay now yeah fine yeah okay so you you have not worked on any uh, new implementation end to end implementation project but what about amit amit mahesh have you worked on any end to end implementation project and Do you have anything to share? Like, what exactly uh, were the problems in SAP asset methodology due to which customers said no? Let's let's deviate from there. Amit, can you hear me? Hey, Gaurav, this is Amit. Actually, hey, I'm out, I'm outside. I'm not able to you know talk much. I'm in a listening okay. mode now. i will be okay. uh, at my desk in next 10 15 minutes then we can talk okay okay thank you yeah. what about mahesh mahesh do you want to share something here sandeep hi uh, yes gorup so basically in this asset methodology the difficulty is that so whenever you are facing any issues or anything you cannot come back straight forward to the uh, like development or your activation page So as for me, that is the main uh, issues. Um, yes. So uh, sometimes it's difficult to uh, do the uh, like uh, DevOps kind of activities. So suppose uh, I am doing some configuration and suddenly uh, 
it should be the testing also going on and if uh, tests are uh, find any issues or difficulties so then and there it should be uh, fixed or like uh, do the rectification but that is difficult in this process because uh, lots of transfer move, transport movement activities uh, happen in this methodology that is not uh, like uh, customized so when the transport is moved to the uh, development to quality and quality to production it cannot reverse right you have to again uh, do the configuration from the uh, development uh, environment and then you have to go by uh, like flow with the flow Okay. That, uh, that problem will even come in let's say yes, for Hana also. If you will say that let's say you done some configuration. Thank you. So see this this problem will always be there that you make some configurations and then you realize that uh, something was wrong and uh, customer was not expecting this particular thing and then when you actually started uh, testing in the system and customer is saying no 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 I want to change this so anyways you have to go back to the development system you have to perform those changes and then you have to move to the quality system so that that thing will definitely come but the first thing that you said the first point that uh, maybe you realize that whatever thing was done wrong, maybe at the very later stage. So, for example, uh, you started configuring the system in, let's say, June, and UAT was done in October. So, three to four months, you were doing the realization, and finally, you uh, started doing the UAT in the month of October. And in the October, the uh, the user who is testing, who is performing the UAT, he found out that there is something wrong. And now, after this three to four months, you need to actually go back and start performing this configuration again. Okay, so that is a challenge that you already invested three to four months of time performing the configuration, and then you realize that the basic configuration that you have done, it itself was wrong, which requires a lot of rework. Okay, so if if that issue could have been found in the, let's say in the June itself or in the July itself, you could have saved a lot of time. Okay, so that is something which uh, which is problem with SAP uh, asset methodology. Okay, I'll, I'll give you some more examples on what, what I think are the problems in SAP asset methodology. See, first of all, SAP asset methodology follows a waterfall model. Okay, I'll tell you what is a waterfall model. Waterfall model means uh, you you know if, if I ask you let's say if you're working on SAP ECC system and if I just ask you okay which phase are you in currently in your SAP implementation project so you will definitely give me the fixed answer that I am in the business blueprinting phase or maybe I am in the UAT phase or maybe I am in the final integration phase right so you will be giving the fixed answer why fixed answer because when we were using SAP asset methodology the phases will only start, the next phase will only start once the previous phase has been closed. So for example, if your preparation phase is not completed, you cannot start the business blueprinting phase. Okay, so this is called as a waterfall model, which means you complete the first phase and then you go to the second one. Okay, so your business blueprinting sign off, till the time the business blueprinting sign off is not done, you cannot go for the realization phase, you cannot start configuring the system again till the time you don't completely configure the system you don't complete the realization phase you cannot go to the final preparation phase and same thing like till the time you don't complete the final preparation phase you cannot go to Gola and support okay so this is one of the issues with uh, the SAP asset methodology because it was following the uh, waterfall model Okay, now what is the problem? So let's say even if it is following the waterfall model, what is the problem here? The problem is, as I told you, let's say in uh, the business blueprinting phase, you have written something which was not understood by the customer. So let's say you have written the line in the business blueprinting document that uh, we will configure the settings like this, and then uh, a business blueprinting sign off took maybe months. Okay, so it is normal, right? You submit the business blueprint document, the users 
they need to review the business blueprint document and till the time they sign off it, it takes maybe at least a one one complete month to review that business blueprint document okay and after it is reviewed when the configuration is started okay you perform the configuration and after two months when you uh, asked the user to perform the test there they found out that this is something which we were not expecting and this is something which is not as per our business requirements so what you need to do you need to go back maybe two months back where you performed that configuration and that configuration may affect other configurations also which you have performed so the problem is you need to do a lot of rework okay what is the best solution here what what should be the solution for this kind of situations to avoid this kind of situations is when you create a business blueprint document there itself do the prototyping you know what is prototyping okay i'll, I'll give an example of the prototyping so let's say you created a company code okay and now in the company code you specified that my chart of account will be this my fiscal year variant will be this and uh, my field status variant will be this so before you uh, complete all the configurations of ap ar and everything in the configuration involve the end user at every point in the configuration itself okay so don't wait till the time you complete all the con complete configuration and then go for uat uat should be part of the normal configuration process itself okay so which means let's say you configured general ledger accounting involve the user understand whether there is any problem before you go ahead and configure ap and ar this is just for example even in gl accounting also you can divide the project into three four parts so you complete the first part you show it to the client you you check it whether these are the current uh, correct first correct sorry uh, configurations that you have done and they only go to the next phase okay but in sap asset methodology doesn't allows that waterfall model says that you complete the first process and then only you can go to the next one again you complete the next one then only you can go to the third one okay so this waterfall model is one of the problem with sap asset methodology now i'll come to point number 2 which is again a problem in asset methodology for this i will ask you one simple question let's say you are working on a project you are working on the implementation project now in this implementation project let's say you understood the business requirements from the customer and you submitted the business blueprint document okay now my now question number 1 to you is once you submit the business blueprint document how many times customer will ask you or customer will tell you you have written something in the business blueprint document maybe you have written business area or maybe you have written profit center or something like that which we are not able to understand what exactly it means do you come across this kind of situations in the implementation project that whatever you are written in the business blueprint document customer is not able to understand that the key terminology which are sap related okay so you know you know what is company code you know what is business area so you just written very straight forward you will create this much number of business areas but how many times customer doesn't understand that what exactly is business area and he comes and ask you can you tell me what exactly is business area and how exactly it will work Then there's a question to you. Do you agree that customers will come and ask you this kind of questions when you submit the business blueprint document? Akash, yeah. 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 So customers come, right? Yeah, Gaurav. Okay. okay. Akash, you are there on the call. I think you are working on the implementation project, so you can actually give us some. Hello. Yes, Akash. Can you hear me? It's a little bit problem. You are not able to hear properly. Yes, sir. Network issue, I think. Okay. Okay. So, are you have you understood my question? What I am asking? Mm, please repeat. Yes, my question is in the implementation project when you submit the business blueprint document. 
how many times customer tells you that you are written some thing in the business blueprint like business area profit center can you explain that what exactly it mean what is the what what exactly is business area or what exactly is profit center what exactly is fiscal year variant so many times customers are not able to understand this terms right you do you agree to that yes 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 so in short what i mean to say here is normally when we create a business blueprint document we use lot of terminologies we use lot of uh, sap related terminologies which are not familiar to the customer okay and what is the situation in that case what you will do if a customer is saying you are written fiscal year variant and i am not able to understand can you explain so the first try you will give you will try to explain in what is fiscal year variant theoretically maybe you will use a board you will tell him okay these are the different types of a fiscal year one and we have an sap system and this is how they work but again the cost customer will come back again and he will say even if you explain me on board or you explain me theoretically still i am not able to understand okay and they will ask you can you show this thing in the system in the business blueprint in case itself Okay, normally the system is available to you only during the realization phase. Once the business blueprinting has been completed, but customers, this is a very normal situation. According to my experience, in every business blueprinting workshops, we were required to show the SAP systems to the customers. Okay, maybe the demo system, maybe the sandbox system, maybe some other customer system also. Some companies do that. Okay, so in short. customers will always ask you to show something in the system before they sign the document okay but showing the system in the business blueprint document is nowhere mentioned in sap asset methodology okay so that is the reason i told you there are a lot of places where we deviate from the methodology so although we say we are following sap asset methodology but showing the demo system or we following the Agile methodology. This is something which was not available in SAP as a methodology. So these are two big changes which SAP brought in SAP Activate methodology. Now SAP is straightforwardly saying that okay, we know that customers are asking you to show the demos. So why should we wait for the customers that he asked the question? Let's show him the demo system on day one itself. So when you are going for the business blueprinting workshops. instead of having the theoretical discussions show the system directly to them okay so in sap activate methodology one of the very important thing is one of the very new thing is showing the system to the client during the workshops okay in the business blueprinting workshops now the question is which system will you show because our normal systems are only available during the realization okay customer specific system will only be available during the realization so which systems are you going to show so sap has provided the cloud trial versions okay there are cloud trial versions available which can be used for demonstration purpose to the customers okay so i'll explain you where exactly those cloud trial versions are available how to access that and what is happening in the industry shortly but i hope you understood now these two important points number 1 is uh, in sap asset methodology we were following the waterfall model and second thing is although in business blueprinting phase there was no uh, nothing written related to the demonstration to the customer but we were still following that and we were deviating from the asset methodology okay so now let's talk about what is sap activate and how sap activate is better than sap asset methodology so let me start the slides So what is SAP Activate? SAP Activate is one simple, modular, and agile methodology supporting all S4 HANA transition scenarios. Okay, what do you mean by all transition scenarios? All transition scenarios. If you remember yesterday we discussed, not yesterday, we a day before yesterday. What are the three different kind of projects? We have implementation project. We have System conversion project and the third one is landscape transformation. 
So this SAP Activate methodology supports all three S4 HANA transition scenarios. And the other thing is one simple. So it is simple compared to the asset methodology. When you go through the details, you will find out why it is simple. Modular, which means it is divided into different modules. So even SAP asset methodology was modular because it was divided into different phases. And agile, this is very important. Agile is a term which is being followed in the software industry from quite some time now. Because even the software development projects, they are following the waterfall model earlier. But nowadays, every uh, software development is following the agile and scrum master. So these two terminologies, agile, scrum master, project management, these are like improved a lot from last some years. And SAP is trying to make the use of this latest trends. Okay, so they want to make their methodology, which is agile, which uses the Scrum Master concept, and which also utilizes the best project management practices. Okay, going to the point number two, it provides full support for initial deployment and continuous business innovation. Okay, so it is not only for the first time implementation that you can use SAP Activate methodology, but you can use the Activate methodology for continuous business innovations also, which means, see, once you implement your SAP system, it doesn't mean that you are not going to do anything later on. So once you implement, there will be a lot of small, small projects that you will be doing in your organization. So this SAP Activate will not be only using for the initial deployment, but it will be also used for continuous business innovation, for continuous projects that you'll be working on your organization. It has a harmonized implementation approach for cloud on premise and hybrid, which means not only you can use SAP Activate methodology for on premise, you can use it for cloud and you can also use it for hybrid deployment options. So we already discussed what is cloud and what is on device. Day before yesterday, we already discussed what do you mean by SAP S4 HANA on device system, vis a -vis what is SAP S4 HANA cloud system. What is hybrid? Hybrid means mix of both. Okay, so normally in any SAP implementation project, there are different components required. Like you have SAP S4 HANA on device component, but you also want to use hybrids, you also want to use Ariba, you also want to use success factor. So this hybrids, Ariba, success factor, and all these are cloud solutions. So you are using your core system on premise, and you are using this advanced features on cloud. So you are actually using mix of on premise as well as cloud. So this kind of setup is called as a hybrid setup. Okay, so SAP Activate, methodology is available for all three scenarios. Number four point, it has a broad coverage of SAP solutions starting with SAP S4 HANA, which means SAP Activate methodology is not only used for SAP S4 HANA, but now whatever new products SAP will bring, like hybrids, like success factor, like Ariba, so even the implementation of these cloud-based services can be done using SAP Activate methodology. So it has a broad coverage. It is not only SAP S4 HANA system, it is a broad coverage. It will be used in all the different products of SAP. And finally, it is a successor of SAP and SAP launch methodology. What do you mean by successor? In our course, you will find this word a lot of times, successor. Successor means, so this Activate is replacing SAP. Okay, so which means earlier we were using SAP, now the successor of SAP is Activate. So earlier we were using SAP ECC, now we are using successor of ECC, which is S4 HANA. Okay, so same thing like successor of SAP and SAP launch methodology is nothing but SAP Activate methodology. So going forward for SAP S4 HANA projects, we are not going to follow SAP SAP methodology, we need to follow SAP Activate methodology. Okay, saying that, let me tell you one more thing. There is very few knowledge available on SAP Activate methodology in the market. Okay, so even bigger companies, when they are implementing SAP S4 HANA, 
even they are telling to the customer that we will follow SAP activate methodology, but actually speaking, they are still sticking to SAP asset methodology. So they are not using the demo systems. They are not following the agile methodology. They are just following the same old methodology which was followed till now. Okay, so saying that we are following and actually following are two different things. Right, so why I'm sharing this knowledge is it may happen that when you work on the project, you come across, oh, they are following SAP SF methodology, but we learned that we can only use SAP Active. No, it is not the case. Methodology are just recommendations from SAP. Okay, what you are following, it is up to the customer and it is up to the consulting part. Okay, so you just need to remember that SAP's recommendation is follow SAP activate methodology whenever you are going for SAP S4 HANA projects. Any question on this slide? No problem. Okay, let's go to the next one. Now, SAP Activate consists of three different pillars. So see, SAP Asset was only the methodology. Okay, it was only providing the methodology which has five phases. But when it comes to SAP Activate, it is not only the methodology. You can see there are three pillars. Methodology is one of those. Okay, very important question from the interviews or maybe in the exam point of view. What are the three key pillars? Three pillars of SAP Activate. So you have to select methodology, best practices, and guided consideration. Okay, so now what exactly do you mean by pillars? So methodology is one thing that SAP is, uh, Activate provides you a methodology, but apart from the methodology, it also provides the base practices. Now, what do you mean by base practices? So again, if you go to session uh, day before yesterday, we discussed about on-premise versus on-cloud. And we discussed that if you are going for on-cloud system, customers need to follow only the best practices. They cannot perform their own customizations. They cannot create their retransactions and all. It has, they have to follow the standard delivered content from SAP. So that standard delivered content is called as best practices. So whatever is available in SAP, standard SAP, that is nothing but the best practices. Okay, so now saying that, let's say I want to implement the SAP system. I am a customer. And let's say I want to implement 1809. Now, 1809 was just launched two months back. Okay, and not even there are many consultants who know how exactly 1809 will work. What is new in 1809? How the processes will work? What are the changes? What are the new screens? Okay, so that is a major problem, right? Let's say if SAP delivers the product without any information on how to use it, then definitely will not be able to use that product at all, right? And that is the reason whenever SAP releases a product, they provide the base practice content, okay? So base practice content can be activated in your system, okay? So as soon as you use the SAP system, I'll show you where exactly you will find the SAP base practices in your own system. And I'll also show you where exactly SAP has provided the documentation, which as a consultant, we can go, we can download that document and it will, it will be very helpful whenever you want to provide the training to the end user or you want to create an end user document or you want to create a evaluation document. So there are a lot of templates available from SAP in the base practice content. Okay, so I'll show you where exactly to download those. And third one is guided configuration. Now, what is guided configuration? So, Yesterday, I think uh, Varun or Sandi asked this question that in SAP Fiori, can we also perform the configuration or it is just for the end users? So my answer was, in SAP Fiori, as of now, when we are going for on-premise, in case of on-premise, there are very few configuration apps available. Okay, most of the apps which are available on SAP Fiori are Transactional, analytical, and fact sheets. But there are few apps 
it will actually allow you to perform the configuration. Okay, so for example, let's say you want to create a business area or you want to determine the account, uh, account determination. Okay, so those basic things can be done using SAP Fiori screens. That is nothing but guided configuration. So what is the difference between the guided configuration and the normal configuration? If you want to perform the normal configuration, you have to go for SPRO within SPRO, you go to enterprise structure, within enterprise structure, select financial accounting. Okay, so there is a huge path that you have to follow to perform that configuration or to be able to the T code. But with SAP Fiori, SAP has provided a kind of tool which is used for the configuration and the screens are just like a guided, like it will keep on asking you simple, simple questions and based on that, it will automatically suggest you that you need to create business areas. Okay, so this is something which is very good for uh, the companies to also understand why they are using business areas and all. Okay, but the restriction here is this guided configuration is mainly available on cloud. Okay, on premise, only few configuration apps are available, but in cloud, all the configurations in SAP Cloud, please understand this. I think we have not discussed this point day before yesterday. If you are using cloud solution, let's say you got a project where customer has a uh, customer is actually working on SAP S4 on a cloud. In cloud system, you will never get SPRO access. Okay, SPRO access will not provide it to you if you are working on the cloud solution. The reason is SPRO is restricted. Okay, so if let's say if I give you SPRO access and you go to the client level and let's say make the changes at the country and currency level, so what would be the problem? The problem would be all the other company posts which are using the same system they will get affected. Okay, and that is the reason in the cloud solution, you will never get SPRO access. So the question is then how will I perform the configuration? So you have to perform the configuration using this guided configuration theory apps. Okay, so guided configuration is a concept which is mainly delivered for cloud solutions. So if you are going for cloud solutions, definitely you will be able to see guided configuration, but if you are going for on-premise, there are very few apps which will be available on Fiori. But yes, going forward, maybe two, three years from the line, you'll also get a guided configuration available on premise also. Okay, so to summarize, SAP Activate is not only the methodology, but it is a combination of methodology, best practices, and guided configuration. Okay, so we will understand all these three things in detail. Guided configuration will not be able to see practically in the system, but the basic practices and methodology we are going to talk in detail. So let's go to the next one. Now, this is the methodology. Okay, so SAP activate road to S4 HANA. I think this is cutting this. So let's keep it. Okay, so it is road to SAP S4 HANA. So these are the different phases in SAP Activate methodology. Okay, so now if you try to correlate these phases with SAP SF methodology, the initial preparation is called as prepare. Okay, so initial preparation is this one, prepare. The business blueprinting is explored. Okay, a realization is realized, final preparation is deployed, and goal and support is run. Okay, but there is one more called as discover. Now, what exactly is discover? So now, since SAP S4 HANA, every version is a completely new product, right? So before customers decide to go for S4 HANA, they want to discover, they want to learn what is new in S4 HANA or what, what functionalities we can get in S4 HANA. Okay, not only customers, even we as consultants, we need to upgrade ourselves every time whenever SAP comes up with a new version. So now let's say we are running 1809. 
maybe next year sap will come up with 1909 so we need to discover what is new in 1909 okay so there will not be much of major major changes but still it is good to always be updated on whatever is available in the market the latest version okay so discover means you will try to understand what is available for the first time what is new in uh, the particular version compared to the previous version so that is nothing but discovery so for customers also sap recommends that before you decide on sap as for hana you discover you try to learn what things are available in sap as for hana and then take a decision okay so how customers will discover how will they by going through the documents yes obviously sap has provided lot of documents if you remember yesterday also i showed you one link which was a help link and there were lot of documentation available like what is new what are the new features in s4 hana simplification list and all so obviously that is one starting point where customers can go and try to understand what features are available in the new version and second is you can see experience the cloud trial you can see this one experience the cloud trial so as i told you sap has provided the cloud trial version cloud trial version means the customers who just want to see what is new in s4 hana they can ask sap to provide a free cloud trial version which is available for 14 days okay there are two type of cloud trial versions available in from sap the first one is for 14 days and second one is for 30 days the first one which i am talking about 14 days is completely free okay so you can uh, go and see how exactly sap or is things will look like and all those things okay the second one which is available so the first one which i am telling you it's a cloud trial version okay it is a cloud you will be only able to run the cloud server if you want on premise if you want to see on premise system it is available for one month but sap is not charging you anything for that but since this on premise system needs a server where it can be installed right so amazon is taking care of that amazon web services aws and if you want to access that 30 days trial amazon will charge you based on how much time you are using So let's say if you are using for two hours, Amazon will charge you for two hours. If you are using for four hours, Amazon will charge you for that much amount of time. So it is based on AWS service, which is available for the on-premise system. Okay. So in short, for customers, they will also get these two choices. They can go for the free cloud trial version, or they can go with the AWS on-premise version. Okay. So to discover. how exactly the new screens will look like what is the new processes that i'll be getting so all those things they can go for cloud trial version okay once they discover they will be able to decide whether they want to go for s4 hana or not what functionalities they should use which functionalities they can upgrade from their current system so once they decide they will actually enter into the project so then it will be starting as a normal project where the first phase is prepare which is exactly same as your initial preparation phase in asset methodology so what we do in the initial preparation we start with defining the teams we decide who is going to be uh, handling the fi part which consultant will be working on co part who will be the project manager what would be the scope of the project what would be the timeline of the project what would be the location of the project okay so normally all these things are taken care in the preparation phase but there is one new activity which was not required earlier okay in the preparation phase we were only looking after the project management related activities but there is now one more new thing which was not required earlier and that is arranging the demo server because as i told you earlier in sap asset methodology we were not showing any system to the client in the blueprinting phase okay the blueprinting phase was completely theoretical we were just creating the pdfs or word documents and submitting to the customers and customers were seeing the screens only during the realization phase but when it comes to sap activate methodology 
during the business blueprinting phase itself we will be having different workshops where we will be showing actual system to the customer we will be showing the system to the customer explaining him how the things will work in sap and then based on that they will understand what is the business area what is the company core what is the purchasing of what is the profit center so they don't have those questions like they, they should not come back and say oh you written something in the business blueprint document but i don't know what exactly is a business area okay because they will be able to see all these things during the explore phase itself so in the explore phase we will be having lot of workshops where we will be explaining them how exactly sap s4 hana works what are the key elements in sap s4 hana and then and there itself we will create a document but instead of calling this document as business blueprinting we will call it as a fit gap analysis document fit gap analysis document fit means you explain let's say you are explaining accounts payable to the users now during accounts payables you in the workshop you explain them how to create a vendor master what is a vendor account group what are the number ranges okay and there itself when a customer has given you the list of account groups that they want to use they have given you the number ranges that they want to use so those things are available in the standard system so you will just write that this particular requirement is completely fit into the system so there is no modification required okay but let's say during the ap process when you try to explain them how the invoice will be created in sap system vendor invoice at 60 and customer said everything looks okay but the way in which the due date is calculated in the system i am not happy with the standard i want to modify it and i want to maybe apply some new logic to it okay so in that case you will say it is a gap because it is not available in the standard system okay so you will identify that gap and you will work on that gap how can you solve it issue okay that thing could be treated as a gap okay so instead of creating the business blueprint document in the explore phase we will be creating the fit gap analysis document okay so in the prepare phase you will arrange the server in the explore phase you will use that server to demonstrate the scenarios when you demonstrate the scenarios customers will agree on some situations which will be say fit customers will disagree on the particular scenario where you will say it is a gap okay and then in the realization phase you will perform the configuration for the fit scenarios and you will develop the z objects for the gap scenarios so in short you will uh you will actually perform the realization you will actually perform the configuration as well as you will develop the system to suit the business requirements of the customer okay and once the realization phase is completed where you said yes now my all configurations are already done and my uh the customs are also available then you can go for the deployment the deployment phase what you will do in the deployment phase you will actually test the system uh, your users will actually test the system they will perform the uat you will perform the uh, data migration scenarios okay and finally on one fine day you will start using the system that is you will go live okay so that is nothing but running the system okay so these are on the higher level the different phases which you have in sap activate methodology one very important thing we understood the phases so it is discover prepare explore realize deploy and run but what you can see here is this iterative this iteration what do you mean by this iteration this means we are following agile methodology what do you mean by agile methodology now so if you remember i told you in sap asset methodology you cannot go to the explore phase till the time you don't complete the prepare you cannot go to the realization phase till the time you don't complete the business blueprinting phase right 
but in sap activate methodology you can always come back and forward because we are not following the waterfall model okay so maybe you can say my ap process in the prepare phase but my uh gl accounting is already in the realization phase so you can actually perform multiple different processes at different phases okay so if i ask you at any point of time in sap as for hana which uh, which is your current uh, phase which you are doing so you can answer me in such a way that our ap is almost finalized we are in the deployment phase of ap but for asset accounting we are still in the realization phase okay that is completely fine but in sap it was not possible like this because you were going for everything in one go okay so you complete everything asset accounting realization ap ar everything then only you can go for the uat phase right but here in sap activate methodology you can actually work on different phases at the same time okay and that is the reason it is called as agile methodology agile means you are going to involve your end users on day to day basis you are going to work on different phases at any particular point of time there is no waterfall model where you cannot go to the previous step once you are on the next step that is not like that you can always come back on the previous step if required okay any question on this slide yes uh, uh, yes priyanka go ahead so uh, you said about the prepare phase where we uh, show the client about this uh, system but this is the uh, case where the sap clients customer is new to sap because the customers who are actually using sap they are aware of or the second part of the question is is it that case that we need to tell them how the new s4 hana behave for for example asset accounting or credit management which is changed this is how it is behave and then we come to the explore phase where we do the fit gap analysis so for existing customer how this prepare phase work okay see prepare is not showing prepare is just making sure that you have a software you have a cloud version available which can be used for the demonstration purpose demonstrations will be done in the explore phase okay so now coming to your question in the explore phase uh let's say you you are required to arrange the workshop with the end users but now your question is whether i should show them the entire process or i should show them only the new process now this completely depends upon the business requirements okay so maybe customer is saying i know everything how sap works but he only knows what was implemented in this scenario okay so just for example if a end user see end user is not aware of the complete sap system end user is only aware of how his particular system works okay so for example if the last company who has implemented sap in the current organization they may have implemented this to their knowledge but it's it's already been taken as let's say now that there are a lot of changes in the standard sap system and customer is definitely not aware of that so it is always better to start from scratch okay whatever he knows we can go fast and whatever he doesn't knows he will be delighted to see that okay his functionality is available and we were never aware of this agreed okay thank you and there's one more question uh, related to it uh, when you said that uh, suppose ap we are taking first and asset accounting is coming later wise so generally as we saw in the project the quality box how does it goes so is it means that the servers are ready by that time because the experience is that for, till now the sf methodology the server uh, the quality box the test system gets ready afterwards so in this case it means all the quality system test system development system all are ready right and then we are pushing process by process again again it depends priyanka so okay let's say for example definitely if the systems are not ready you cannot go to the deployment phase even you cannot go for the realization phase itself right let's say your system itself is not ready so you cannot think of any process going into the realization phase correct correct right so we are assuming here that the system is ready and then some of the processes you can start configuration while some of the processes we are still in 
uh, the discussion with the customer and you still not finalize the scope right okay thank you yeah any other questions i think uh, whatever points we discussed here will come in detail in the next slide so maybe i'll go to the next slide and see if you have any questions you can stop so this is just the gaurav one question uh, see in, in discover phase you said that uh, you uh, the customer will be experiencing the cloud trade version right he will be running the screens of sap and again in the prepare phase uh, means what demonstration will be show again because we will always be always uh, they before only use pc or i this cloud tray means what uh, so, uh, i say in the discover phase this cloud phase is something before you decide on the project so let's say for example today there are a lot of customers who are either not using s3 at all and there are some customers who are using hcp ecc but they are still not decided to go for xcol so they are under discover phase because they are just discovering how hcp will help our business objective okay so for example if a current customer who is running hcp ecc there are different vendors who are approaching him why shouldn't you why are you not going for hcp is for hana but he is still discovering that if i go for hcp is for hana what will i get what benefits i'll get okay so this is a question what benefits i'll get then maybe uh, some consulting companies will arrange a workshop with the customer where they will explain them okay currently you are using this version of hcp and this this is features are not available if you go for s4 hana you will get this is this new features okay so this is discover customer is trying to understand what i will get out of hcp s4 hana but when we are going into the prepare and explore this time customer is already started the project so they already now they already know that they are implementing hcp and during that time there will be detailed discussion in the discover it was just like okay let, let me take you the simple example and you are you want to buy apple okay so first of all before you buy apple you need to understand what benefits apple will give you so you are discover but once you bought apple now now you want to actually know what are the new features and how can i activate those features so that is something which you are exploring on your own product right karun so that is the basic difference between discover okay. and okay so these things are explained in detail here you can see uh, we already included so we only included four phases that is prepare explore realize and deploy discover and run because these are the processes which are before the project and after the project but normally the project life cycle revolves around this four phases so prepare is Uh, the phase which starts with the project setup as i told you you finalize the team who will be handling the team who will be the who will be responsible for f5 who will be responsible for sd and all who will be my project manager what will be my project timelines those things are decided during the prepare phase roadmap and approach what do you mean by roadmap and approach so customer also need to decide in the prepare phase whether they want to go for the cloud or they want to go for on premise right so if a customer is interested in implementing sap as for hana they have to first decide whether they want to go for sap as for hana cloud version or they want to go for sap as for hana on premise version that is first question the second question that they need to answer is whether they are going to implement the system as a new implementation or they are going to perform the system conversion okay so these questions are answered in the preparation phase okay that is the reason we written road map and approach the third one is in the preparation phase itself you need to finalize this system okay so you need to arrange for the cloud trial version which already has the base practices installed so you can see start with the base practices now once you have all these things ready you have a team ready you know what is the road map you know you have the system which can be used for the demo purpose you will enter into the explore phase now in the explore phase you have to start from here right so you can see this flow is like this 
So we'll start with activating the solution and rapid prototyping. So as I told you, we'll be prototyping the system to the customer. We will be explaining them how you can work on SAPS for HANA system, how you can create a vendor, what are account groups, what are invoices, all these things you will just try to explain. Them. So it is not necessary that you will only arrange one workshop. There can be sequence of workshops. So there can be one workshop only on vendor master data. There can be another workshop which is only on vendor invoices. There can be third workshop which will be only on payments. Okay, so during those workshops, you will be collecting the fits and gaps. Okay, so what is agreed? The customer is saying yes, perfect. If SAP is able to provide me this functionality, I want to go with the standard one. But somewhere if the SAP is, uh, sorry, customer is saying, oh, no, no, this is something which I follow differently in my current system. And I want to adjust SAP accordingly. And I want to make a custom out of that. Then you will identify it as a gap. So you'll be having fit and gap analysis here. After fit and gap, you will create a data design document. Now, what is a data design document? This is nothing but address, functional specification and technical specification. So you identify there is a gap, and here you are trying to specify how are you going to fill that gap. Okay, let's take a practical example. One of our customers, it was we were explaining in the EBS process, the electronic bank reconciliation process. Now customer said, yes, it is very good functionality available in CP. But we want to automate it. We, we want more level of automation, which is not possible in the standard system. Okay, so they said, okay, we, we want to add these this, this things in our uh, custom object. So looking at the requirement, first of all, we identified that particular feature as a gap. Okay, and then we understood what customer wants, and we return that in the document, in the functional specification document. Now, after writing the things in the functional specification documents, we discuss this FS with the customer. Okay, so normally what we do, we understand the requirement, we create a FS which is partially completed. This is a normal process which every company is following. We just create a FS just for one document which is in the reports. Okay, otherwise you cannot get anything in FS. You normally directly says with your adapter and tell him what exactly needs to be done. But it is always a good practice that you write a good FS. And before you involve your abapper here, you discuss this FS with the customer. Just to make sure that whatever you have written, it is the same thing that customer is expecting out of that functionality, out of that customization. Right? So you will create a FS document. Before you give it to the A, before you give it to your abapper, you will have a different round of discussions with the customer. Okay, you can see this is this process is also iterative. So you understood the requirement, you created a document. Customer said no, there are some changes. So again, you discuss the document. Again, you created version two of that document. Again, customer said no, there are few changes. Again, you go back. So finally, at one point, customer will say yes, this looks perfect. Okay, so this is what I was looking for. Now you can proceed with the development. Okay, so you will finalize your data design document. And you will add it into the list of backlog, which is your massive objects. Okay, so backlog means what? You identify that there are customization number one, customization number two, customization number three. So you identify what number of Z transactions you want to add. Okay, or what number of uh, custom codes that you need to add. So that is nothing but data backlog. So in the explore phase, you have a complete fit document, you have a data design document, which is functional specs, and you also have a list of checklist of the uh, data documents, like gap documents, so that you are in track of that, like where exactly are we and how can we proceed towards the realization phase. Now, again, in realization, normally what we do, we complete the realization for four months. So, four months, no interaction with the customer because customer has finalized on this list and we are working on the configuration. Okay, so no interaction with the customer. After four months, when we complete the realization phase, when we ask the customer to test, on day one itself, he issues a lot of problems. Okay, why? Because 
we understood the requirements we created a document but when we perform the configuration we have not seen this document correctly or maybe there could be any n number of issues because of which you were not able to replicate what was expected by the customer okay so what happens is you waste all those four months and again there is lot of free work so how to avoid that in order to avoid that in sap activate there is something called as sprint execution so instead of doing all the realization at once taking four months or five months of time let's do it weekly realizations so you decide what you want to complete this week okay so make a weekly plan for example in this week i will set up the enterprise structure it, it is not necessarily weekly i'm just giving you example it can be every 15 days also so let's say every 15 days i have a target i will set up this and once i set up this i will have a walk through with the customer here is it so if there is anything wrong it can be immediately resolved rather than waiting for four months okay so you can see you perform your configurations into sprints so only seven days 15 days configurations will be impacted if there is something wrong so you do the walk through and then you go to the next step that is you perform your unit test okay unit test integration test whatever test you want to perform you perform here and finally you ask your customer to perform the uat you make sure that everything is ready prepare for the cutover and just go live okay so two important things to understand here which are new compared to as a methodology number 1 you need a the cloud system number 2 uh, you are following the achai because of the situations and this is sprint execution is coming from scrum master which is again a technique which is being followed in the software industry to avoid the uh, and to avoid the uh, rework sorry to avoid the rework okay so instead of reworking after few months if there is anything you can do it in itself so you can save a lot of time okay now let's talk about one thing in detail in the next slide this is just another example so basically you are having two different workshops with the customers two types of workshops okay and just see the headline is validation instead of blueprinting okay so you are no more doing the blueprinting you are actually perform the validations what is fit what is gap so that is called as a validation okay so let's say there are two kind of workshop that will be happening with the customer the number one workshop would be solution validation okay which is part of your flow phase okay so what you will do you will show the system to the client you can see let me make it bigger yeah so you set up the scope in the reference value second is validation of sap solution where you will be showing and telling sap standard key design elements to the customers so you are actually showing the system and identifying the data and gaps okay so that is the whole purpose of the solution validation to find out what is fit and what is gap now once you identify the gaps let's say the these are just for example 16 gaps okay so out of 16 gaps you need to identify which are more critical which are less critical okay you have to prioritize that you have to prioritize that based on which which uh, gap you will try to solve first which will come as second priority what will come as the third and what will come as the fourth priority so again we see here there are 16 gaps in this example four are must which are most critical then should then could then would okay so this is the priority in which you will go ahead with the gaps and then you will create a data design document in the workshop b data design okay and in the uh, workshop b you will be discussing about uh, the data design which is a fs document as i told you you will verify and accept the changes in the data design and based on that you will keep on adding in the backlog okay and finally you have this release and sprint planning which means you will release based on the priority what should be done first what should be done second what should be done third 
right so that is called as validation instead of business preprinting and let's go to the i think this was the last slide yes this was the last slide on the sap activate methodology but apart from the slides i want to show you a lot of information that you can get online on sap activate and which is very important so for example how to access the best practices how to access the methodology okay so guided configuration you don't need to worry because it is only available on the cloud version okay so if you are using cloud origin by default the guided configuration will be available okay so let me show you this two links where you will find the methodology and where you will find the best practices just give me a minute for that let me open these two sites i will ping you the site urls also on your chat screen Okay, I sent you one URL on your chat screen. So if you want to see parallelly with me, you can click on that, or maybe just copy it and keep it somewhere safe. So maybe you can save it under your favorites because this would be very important. Okay, when you are working on the projects. Okay, let me know if you are able to see the screen. Can you see my screen now? is loading yeah okay please confirm once it is done it's still loading for me yes i don't know for others so what are that you able to see my screen now your home page is yeah, yeah i can see now yes now it's yeah. going to Okay. Yes, I can see. Okay, so this is called roadmap fever. If you just type on Google SAP Activate Roadmap Fever, okay, uh, and maybe uh, I already provided you the link. So just go for this link, and in the roadmap fever, you will find solution specific tab. Okay, so just click on this solution specific, or maybe even you can. Here, no. Instead of this, you should always click on this solution specific. Okay. So once you come on this solution specific page, okay, just wait. It is loading. Yes. Can you see the now? Can you see now? Different options on the loading page. Not yet. Okay, so I'll be slow because it should not happen that I'm explaining and that page is not available. Just confirm once it's available. A lot of time. Okay. No, not yet. Still not. Okay, why is taking that much time? So just give me a minute. Methodology overview, not not just. Yes, definitely. Methodology overview. So I'm able to see the complete page. Mm, no, the only the first uh, the menu bar the person home SAP methodology overview, but the entire screen is white, still white. Oh. 
What if I change the screen? Are you able to see the PPT or the same page? I think it is please. For me, same page. Uh, others. Okay, so maybe the screen is please. Just give me a minute. Let me try to. Just let me know whenever there is any movement. Okay. No, it's now the uh, yes. Now I I can see solution specific solution specific yes. on plan. Yeah. Okay. 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 So this is the solution specific page. What do you mean by solution specific? So if you remember this now, when we started SAP Activate in, in the first slide itself, I told you SAP Activate is available for all different type of deployment options. So it is available for cloud, and it is also available for on-premise as well as hybrid. Second point we discussed, it is available for all SAP products starting from SAP S4 HANA. So, which means it is available for Alba, it is available for Hybris, it is available for Success Factor. Also, there are a lot of applications where the SAP Activate methodology would be used. Okay, so same thing is explained here. You can see the first section is solution specific on cloud, and second part is solution specific on device. Okay, so. Oh, no, your screen is fixed. Are you still not able to see any movement on the screen? Yeah, no. Okay, so is it appearing now? On premise? Can you see this on premise? Yes, coming. Yeah. Okay, so there are two sections here on device and on cloud. Now, depending upon which version are you using, whether you are using cloud or you are using on premise, you have to select the proper version here. So, let's say, for example, you want to see on premise. Okay, we want to see how SAP Activate methodology works on premise. So, you can see there are Three sections are available here. Under optimize, there is something called as transition to SAP S4 HANA. Okay, so this is relevant for us because we want to understand how can we use SAP Activate methodology for SAP S4 HANA. Second is transition to SAP BW4 HANA. So again, this is a new product from SAP called as BW4 HANA. Okay, so if you are implementing only BW4 HANA, you will be going with this methodology. And third one is SAP S4 HANA upgrade and product integration roadmap. Okay, so you don't need to worry about this. There are a lot of products which are coming from SAP and they are following SAP Activate methodology for all these products. Okay, so let's forget about the third one. When it comes to cloud. Okay, so if I go for cloud, you can see the first one is SAP Activate methodology for SAP S4 HANA Cloud. So the customers who are going for the cloud version, this methodology will be relevant. Second is SAP Activate methodology for SAP S4 HANA Cloud, comma, single tenant edition. What is the difference now? What do you mean by single tenant versus this one? So again, if you remember, uh, in our, I think, second session, we discussed about on premise versus on cloud. And I told you normally, cloud system is shared by multiple clients. Okay, so one single system, there can be multiple clients who are using the same system. Okay, but there are some companies who will not like this. Okay, because your system, your data may be, see, definitely. Uh, Amazon, Microsoft, SAP, they are making sure that your data is always secure. 
but still if some companies are reluctant and they don't want to use the sharing system they can ask sap to provide single tenant edition single tenant edition means only your system will be deployed your data will be deployed and it will not be shared by other clients definitely the price the subscription cost of this single tenant edition will be multiple compared to the normal rest of our cloud edition but these are the difference between a single tenant and just the cloud edition okay then you have sap activate methodology for success factors which is a cloud version of success factors sap s4 hana methodology for sap hybris sap s4 hana methodology for ariba and sap activate methodology for developing sap s4 hana cloud extensions okay so in short there are six methodologies available for cloud and there are two methodologies sorry three methodologies which are available for on premise but when we are talking about our main sap s4 hana system we don't need to worry about all these things let's think on this transition to sap s4 hana okay so you can see in transition to sap s4 hana this methodology is divided into two parts phases and work streams okay what are phases phases we just now discussed discover phase prepare phase explore utilize deploy and run what are work streams work stream means the kind of activities that you will be doing for example you will be designing and configuring the system you will be performing the data migration of project management custom code extension analytics so in short someone who is taking care of project management he is not interested in configuring and data migration and all he will be working on the project management activities so in overall project whatever activities are relevant to project management you can find here whatever activities are relevant for custom code extension you will find here whatever activities are related to testing you will find here okay so this is just a example these are the work streams let's go to the phases within the phases we already discussed there is discover there is prepare and sap has provided complete detail of each and every phase okay so what are the activities we will be doing on the discover phase each activity is uh, given in detail so for example let's go with discover okay so i want to see whatever things are available within discover so you can see within discover phase it starts with the strategic planning okay obviously discovery means what customer want to discover how sap can help me so before they think about sap they need to understand what is their strategic plan whether they are planning to implement erp erp whether they want to go for first year applications or two tier two applications and also those are all the strategic plan okay second is they will decide on the scoping so whether they want to implement sap as for hana only for finance or only for procurement in short what are the modules they want to implement whether they want to go for hybrids they want to go for success factors so those things will be done during the discover phase itself and then very importantly as i told you trial system provisioning so they will be using the trial system to discover what is new So SAP provides the trial system. If you go through this, it will give you the complete detail. Okay, so any activity, if you click on it, it will give you the complete detail. So I want to go for provide a trial system. So it will tell you how to access the trial system. Okay, so you can see request an SAP trial system in the cloud and provide it to your project. How to request? so you can access the sap cloud appliance via via sap cal which is called as cloud appliance library using this site it is pay per use model hosted on amazon web services okay so as i told you if you want to go for 30 days trial this is 30 day trial on on premise application okay and if the customer is interested to extend this for more than 30 days then definitely you need to pay to sap also in addition to paying to aws you also need to pay to sap okay so you can see uh the procedure go to sap trial landing page 
start click on start your trial now accept the terms and conditions select the trial which you want to use so now now obviously 1809 is available so nobody can go for 1709 click on try now accept the terms and conditions and create an instance okay and even in the accelerators every every activity when you go to sap activity methodology page it provides you some accelerators what do you mean by accelerators accelerator means the content like if you want to know more about that go to this links okay so for example if i click on sap is for our trial learning page it will take me to the learning page which is this one where you can access start your 30 days trial okay so even you can try this but obviously as i told you you need to pay to aws so anyways you have the server access to practice so i don't think you need to go for this study test trial if you want to try on your own you can obviously go to this link and you can access the cloud trial okay okay so this was just an example of one of the activities that is possible in the entire project let's go to the explore phase now we will see one activity in the explore phase so in the explore phase you have this activities this initiation uh, learning design performing the field gap data design introduction finalize your setup so maybe i will take any one as example okay let's take this custom code impact analysis which means let's say your customer was already using sap ecc and now they are planning to go for sap s4 hana as a system conversion so what will happen to their custom objects what will happen to their z objects which are already created so let's click on this custom code impact analysis you can see a pulling on custom code management tools and create a custom code workspace okay so these are the two activities maybe just click on one and it will give you the complete detail of that activity how it needs to be performed okay so in short during the project this link will help you a lot provided you are using sap activate methodology which is normally many few customers are following okay because the knowledge is limited in sap activate methodology but if you follow this definitely the chances of project success are huge compared to the old methodologies that we are following from years okay it is still loading okay so what you can do is you just go to this link which i have given you today okay and try to see uh, most of the information what is available in discover what is available in prepare and make sure that this link is available to you at all times whenever you see this link is not only uh, helpful when you are working on the projects there are few of us who are also working on pre-sales we are working on even i i work on a lot of sales projects so when we visit a customer we need to tell them what methodology we will be following in our project so there also if you are talking about these new terminologies there are high chances that customers will be interested because nobody talked about this new methodologies everybody was talking about sap even in sap as for us this is a real a scenario which i am giving to you now for the customer was impressed just because we added sap activate methodology in uh, the plan that we are going to follow this methodology okay it is slow so i think anyways we don't need to go through that particular detail so maybe we can close now if you have any questions please ask otherwise go through this link and if you have any doubts we can definitely discuss in tomorrow session one more thing which i wanted to show you best practices but i think maybe we can cover it tomorrow so i'll show you how you can access the best practice documents which will be very helpful again when you are working on the project so you will use a step by step process of each and every activity okay any questions before we close no problem no, no. okay then so it's close for today and we are meeting again tomorrow at same time thank you so, thank you thank you thank you yeah thanks goro